Okay, Periscope is already flipped. There we are, and there is my Facebook. All right. Good evening, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here for my <clears throat> second Thursday uh, night teaching called No More Genies. Now, I strongly, strongly, strongly encourage you to go back to the beginning of the No More Genies series. You can find it on my Facebook Live page. Uh, it's on my Periscope, but it's a little harder to find because you can't really rearrange the Periscope videos. But it's on my Facebook Live page, and it's on my YouTube channel. So I have a whole channel where you just have the No More Genies videos. I strongly, strongly encourage you to go back to the beginning of the No More Genies videos and check them out. Because No More Genies is about getting the right idea in our heads. Because the wrong idea, the wrong idea about God and the wrong idea about scriptures has destroyed lives. And that's why I'm so adamant about teaching what the Bible actually says, giving us a practical uh, approach to what the scriptures say and how to apply it to our lives. So we don't just have these wrong and crazy views. So we understand that God is a person and he doesn't follow us. Okay, we follow him. We don't just rub the magic lamp or say a few magic words and then God just does whatever we want or whatever he or whatever we want him to do because that idea has been propagated a lot and that idea has cost a lot of people a lot a lot of pain a lot of tragedy even some death because they thought they could just say a few magic words or they thought that they didn't have to ask the Lord how to do something because they don't understand God as a person so that means that, like that couple that, or several couples that refuse to give medicine to their children, then their children end up dying, and then they blame God for that, and that wasn't God. Maybe the Lord was telling you to take your kids to the hospital. Maybe the Lord was telling you to give your kids medicine. He's a person. He's not a set of rules, and God will never let us fall in love with a method. God knows that what we want as humans more than anything else is a method. We want a formula. We want an easy button. We want a magic word. We want an all-purpose key. So whenever we get in a situation, we can just press the button or say the words or turn the key, problem solved. That's what we want. And God knows that's what we want. Okay? And God will never let us fall in love with a method or a button or whatever God wants us to love him. So he's always infinitely creative in the way he answers our prayers uh, because he always answers our prayers according to his will. But those answers many times may not look like what you thought. And that's why you have to be open to God through your relationship with him because he'll answer you, but it might not be what you thought. Because he's not a genie. And he's not your personal genie. And he's not where, you know, I just call God and he just, again, waves his mighty arm and does what I want and fixes all my problems. But that's what a lot of people think. And that's what a lot of people have been taught. And so that's why I started the No More Genie series. So again, I strongly encourage you to uh, go back to the beginning and look at the first one and look at all of them. Look at all of the No More Genie series so you can see. Because I talk about a lot of different things, a lot of different things where we're doing what I call some Christian myth busting, where we are not uh, you know, going by traditions, where we're not going by what Mama Nim said, we're not going by how you did it in your church. We're not going by denominationalism. We're actually looking at the scripture and looking at, excuse me, looking at how to apply it in our lives and looking at what God is saying to us now. That's what No More Genius is about. So that's why I um, started it. That's why I continue to do it because it's so important because I don't want any more people losing their kids because they refuse to give them medicine or they refuse to go to the hospital because they thought that God had to heal them a certain way or, you know, I don't want any more people getting in bad marriages because you didn't know how to discern a spouse, because you didn't know how to build a marriage because you didn't build it according to the scripture. You built it according to what your thought or your traditions or, or whatever, what you thought, but you never bothered to ask the one that invented marriage, how does this go? Okay, so that's what that's about. So let's dive into tonight's lesson, but again, that's a strong encouragement to watch the entire No More Genie series. So let's start with a word, uh, word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for this night. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your matchless grace. Thank you for being able to come into your presence. 
Um, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins, wash us clean, fill me with the Holy Spirit, O oh God. I turn my mouth, my tongue, my lips, my hands, my brain, my thoughts, everything to you, O oh God. Speak to us through your mighty word and uh, have said what you want to be said so we can receive what it is that you're saying to us, O oh God. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so tonight... Our subject is time to rest, okay? Time to rest. So let me go uh, through my usual intro stuff. Uh, my tagline is God already told you what was going to happen if you just listen to the prophets. I say that every time I minister because that's the advantage as a Christian. You can know what's going to happen before it happens. You can know enough to get ready for it, okay? Um... Uh, Again, welcome to all my audiences, Facebook Live, Periscope, YouTube. Uh, please like and share this video, because whenever God releases a prophetic word or a gift, it's designed to change. Change a family, change a city, change a nation, change the world. If you want to sow into my ministry, I have a PayPal Me link and an Amazon Smile link on all my pages. I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT, because I know there's other ministers and other people out there named David Taylor, but if you want to find me, Prophet David Taylor, that's always a hashtag PDT. Okay, I hashtag everything, so that's the fastest way to find me. Um, live on Facebook and Periscope every Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Then you can watch the replay on Facebook or Periscope or on YouTube. And then second Thursday night, which is tonight, I'm on live with my No More Genie series where we're working on destroying the genie concept of God so we can actually re rebuild and walk in true faith. Okay, so as I said, tonight's lesson is time to rest. So we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. But before I uh, get into that, I want to lay a little groundwork. Uh, first thing I want to say as believers is there's something out there that I call the myth of the super Christian. Okay, again, the myth of the super Christian. And the super Christian is one that does things or tries to do things that Christ himself didn't do. <laughs> it's, the most, <laughs> it's the most amazing thing. Okay, the super Christian, or the myth of the super Christian says that you have to always be happy. You have to always be, you know, happy, happy, joy, joy. Um, you can't ever express any emotion besides happiness because you think maybe that's a violation of your faith, that you always have to, you can't tell the truth about any situation because you think that might be negative confession. But calling something what it is is not negative confession. Um, you don't really have balance in your life in terms of diet, exercise, recreation. Um, and you basically try to do things that Christ himself didn't do. That's the myth of the super Christian. And that's why so many Christians that live that way get burned out. Because they're out of balance. Because, again, they're trying to do things that Christ didn't do. Okay, so that topic is a whole wide, there's like a whole wide range of things, range of things I could teach you there, but tonight I'm just going to teach you on rest. But that's the foundational idea of where I'm getting that from, is that there are a lot of Christians that have run their bodies in the ground, or run themselves crazy, or run themselves broke, or broke up their marriage. Now that's another, man, that's such a common challenge that we have as Christians and also as Christian leaders. Well, that's because it's so easy to get caught up in the work of the ministry and what it is that God called you to do and to, to, get, uh, to get out of balance. Because, yes, that's important, but if you just want to give yourself to that day and night, then you have to stay single. That's what Apostle Paul teaches. And if you want to concentrate on the things of the Lord, the thing to do is not to have a family. Because if you have a family, you have to spend some of your time sowing into, investing with, spending time with developing your family. And a lot of Christian people seem to have a really deep issue with that. So they end up neglecting their spouse, neglecting their spouse's needs, neglecting their own body's needs, and sometimes neglecting their children. And then those are the people that grow up and say they don't want to have anything to do with church, they don't want to have anything to do with God, because they felt like God took their parents from them, or God took their spouse from them, and that was not God. That's not God that did that. That's not God that overloaded you. That's not God that overfilled up your plate. 
That's not God that got you out of balance. Okay? That's you trying to be a super Christian. That's you trying to go to church every time the church door open. Because, <laughs> you know, people go to church four or five. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't misunderstand me. There's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do. But you still need balance. And many times if you make your kids do that, when they grow up, they're going to go hard the other way. And I know a lot of people would think that was sacrilegious, but sometimes there are times you definitely need to be in the house of God. You obviously need to attend at least your weekly service, but there are sometimes you need to be home, cooking some home-cooked food, watching a movie, chilling and relaxing with your family. And I know a lot of people, like I said, would think that is just absolutely sacrilegious, that that is just, you know, oh my goodness, how can you say that? That's because a lot of Christians' lives are just simply out of balance. They're just out of balance. You're just out of balance. And and that's going to end up wreaking havoc in your relationships. Okay? So let's look at how God handles the issue of rest. We're going to look at Genesis 2.2. I'm going to read the first one off the Berean Study Bible. It says, And by the seventh day God had finished the work he had been doing. So on that day he rested from all his work. Now, right there, you got a principle in the Bible that God himself rested. Why in the world, the Bible can tell us plainly in the Genesis account, Genesis chapter 2, that God himself rested, but we don't feel like we need to rest. I don't know where we get that from, other than the myth of the super Christian. Maybe it's just human pride, but we believe it very, very strongly that even though God himself rested, we don't need to. And sometimes, you know, you can be working really hard to birth something new. And when you're working really hard to birth something new, then you have to go into birth mode and you're dealing with, you know, contra contractions and struggles and everything it takes to get the baby out. But after that, you need to rest. You need to get some fluids back in. You need to sleep. You need to do a whole lot of things. You need to rest. And uh, many times Christians just don't have that balance in their lives. But the Bible tells us right here that God himself rested. He finished the work. Now, there it is. And by the seventh day, God had finished the work. God had finished the work. So let me ask you something about your schedule. Is there an end in sight? Do you have built into your schedule a hard date where you say, this project is done. This thing is done. Whatever it is you're dealing with, it's over. Do you have that? Because God did. The Bible said that he finished, okay? The work he had been doing, and on, the, on that day, he rested from all his work. So if God needed to rest, we need to rest. Let's look at what God says about the Sabbath day. That's Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Exodus is the second book in the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, written by Moses. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11 I'm reading out of the King James Version. It says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, now, a lot of people don't understand that the Sabbath day is Saturday. It's not Sunday. Sunday is the first day of the week, okay? The reason that Protestant Christians and Catholics too, but the reason that Protestant Christians worship on Sunday is because, you know, they say that Jesus rose on Sunday. Jesus did not actually rise on Sunday. He rose sometime the day before on Saturday, but by the time they got there on the first day of the week, okay, the women that came to the tomb and Peter and John that ran to the tomb, they went there on the first day of the week and met the angel. And the angel said, Jesus has risen, Jesus has risen and he's gone before them into uh, Jerusalem and he would meet them there. But Jesus actually rose uh, the night before and I'll explain that to you a little bit later. But anyway, that's why we worship on Sunday because they discovered the empty tomb on Sunday morning very early. That's why we worship on Sunday. But Sunday is actually the first day of the week. This passage, the Sabbath, is Saturday. And Saturday is a natural day of rest. It's not talking about worship. It's not talking about all those things that we do 
in the house of God. It's talking about exactly what it says. Are you supposed to work six days? You're supposed to be working basically uh, Sunday through Friday. But we, you know, those of us that work in the house of God, we work on Sunday in the temple. And then Americans have a, an official five-day work week, although obviously a lot of people work on Sunday because we go to the grocery store and, of course, ambulance and EMTs and fire and police. And there are definitely some people that work on Sunday. Movie theaters and, and you know, name it. There are a lot of people, a lot of places that are open on Sunday. They might close early, but they're there. So we're basically supposed to be working from Sunday through Friday. But when Saturday comes, we'll have to, we, we should be done with all our labor for the week. And the seventh day, we should be resting. We shouldn't be doing any work. We shouldn't have anything to do uh, in terms of work with our families. And we're supposed to just relax. Now, there's always a challenge on how much of an extreme you take that to, about how far you should take that. That's different for different people, different for different families. But the point I'm trying to make here is that rest should be built into your schedule. That's my point. That rest should be built in. That there isn't uh, anything that we should be doing during the week where rest isn't a part of that schedule. That's the point I'm trying to make to you here. Because it was a part of God's schedule, and then it turned into a commandment. Okay? Let's look at, well, no, I don't want to go there yet. Uh, so I want to say this, though, before I go there, because we're going to go to a, another scripture. So what I'm saying by that is, is that we want to break up the myth of the super Christian. We want to break up the idea that you have to be going, 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 going all the time, or you should not really serve in God. That workaholic ethic many times is propagated in churches. You've heard it sometimes. You, you've heard people stand up or stand people up in church or recognize them. They say things like, well, I believe Sister Johnson really wants to see the Lord. Well, I believe Sister Johnson really loves the Lord. So does that mean everybody else don't love the Lord? <laughs> but they're rewarding the workaholic ethic. Okay? And that's very, very subtle. But that happens a lot. People are just going, 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 go Tirelessly. And sometimes without recognition or whatever, you need to take a break. You need to have a break. Why? Because, number one, God did. I just showed you that in Genesis. And number two, it's a commandment. Out of the Ten Commandments, God including honoring the Sabbath and breaking, uh, excuse me, making sure that we have rest built into our schedules. Now, if God, the one that created everything, rested, and two, if God, the one that invented these clay bodies that we live in, if he told us you have to rest them, then we have to rest them. Okay? And again, you know, some people got that. Some people got that balance. And some people got a lot of guilt. <laughs> because they feel like if they're not going, going, going all the time, if they're not at the church, every time it opens, if they're not doing a million different ministries, that they're not really good Christians or they're not really serving God right. And that's not true. Because if you are out of balance, you are going to crash and burn. <clears throat> Let me say that again. If you are out of balance, you are going to crash and burn. If you're out of balance, you're going to crash and burn. Okay? Let's look at another scripture. Mark chapter 4, verses 38 through 40. Jesus was inside the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. The followers went and woke him. They said, teacher, don't you care about us? We are going to drown. Jesus stood up and gave a command to the wind and the water. He said, quiet, be still. Then the wind stopped and the lake became calm. He said to his followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? So there's a lot of people that have focused on the Lord saying, peace, be still. I want to focus on verse 38 when he says, Jesus was inside the boat sleeping with his head on a pillow. Sleeping in a storm, no less. That doesn't tell you anything. That when God became a man... He slept even during stressful times. See, now I always imagine Jesus' life as being a life of discovery for him because when God, when the Son of God became Jesus Christ, when he came through Mary's womb and wrapped himself in human flesh, that means he experienced life as we do. That means he was hungry because God's not hungry. That means he blinked. Did you know that God does not blink? God's eyes are never shut. But the Lord blinked. 
he slept, he, he ate food, he had to go through puberty, you know, he had to deal with the indignity of being 12 years old, feeling his body change just like we do. So he experienced life like we do. So he could reach one hand up to God in heaven and one hand down to man on earth and unite us in his own body. Okay? He already was God. He knew what God was being about. He knew what a, a, a being God was about. And then he grabbed our hand through his human experience and united us in him. So the Lord was sleeping inside the boat on their way to their next thing. So that's what I mean when I say if the Lord needed to sleep and even if he slept during a storm and he wasn't worried about that storm, then how much more should we sleep and how much more should we rest? So the reason that the Holy Spirit gave me this tonight is because there's a lot of us that have been pushing very hard in the first quarter of 2019. You've been pushing, 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 pushing really hard, okay? Well, it's time to take a break. <laughs> it's time to take a rest. It's time to realize that you live in a clay body, that if you've got done everything you're supposed to get done in the first quarter, then feel good about that, okay? That's something to feel good about. That's something to be proud of, and that's something that you should feel good about every day. But now, excuse me, but now it's time to take a rest. Now it's time to get back in balance. Now it's time to slow it down. Now it's time not to put yourself, push yourself around the clock, Okay? So uh, that's the basic message tonight. That's really all I had to say. Uh, just wanted to be sure that I released that because that's what Holy Ghost gave me to release is to be sure to let the people know that especially those that have been pushing, 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 that it's time to take a rest, okay? All right, if you have any prayer requests, uh, put them up on the screen right now. Anything you want me to pray for, put it up on the screen. Sorry, I'm looking at my mouth so much. I'm dry mouth again, I'm sorry. <laughs> Any prayer request? Okay. All right. Hold on a second. All right. So I'm only going to say we're clear on certain things because, again, this was just a message to let people know they need to rest. And those of you that have been working hard in quarter one, don't feel guilty about taking that rest. Okay. Okay, well, I think that's it. I'm not seeing anything on the screen, not hearing anything else from the Lord. So, I want to thank you for tuning in live. Please watch the whole No More Genie series from the beginning. And uh, be sure that in the month of April, you build in your rest time, okay? Because that's the thing that it's time to do right now. All right, um, in the days, to, in days and weeks to come, uh, I will let you know, I've got a big book fair I'm going to on Saturday. Uh, so I will let you know about that. And then Easter Sunday, I probably won't be on. Easter Sunday is family Sunday. We need to take time off and be with our family. So I probably won't do a broadcast on Easter Sunday, but I'll confirm that and I'll let you know. So pray for me this weekend at the book fair. And uh, thank you so much. All right, y'all have a good night and be sure to get that rest. God bless.